Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Let Us Reason video series. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, and hopefully you've been enjoying uh, this uh, series so far. We have done a number of those videos talking about the Tawheed dilemma, and we covered really a lot of grounds. We talked, for instance, about the fact that the Quran uh, talks about a separate being from Allah called the Holy Spirit, for instance. We talked about the fact that the Quran elevated the status of Jesus. Then last time we talked about the fact that the Quran elevated the status of both Jesus and his mother Mary, making them special uh, basically persons, uh, none basically uh, or sinless, if you wish, and uh, in the case of Jesus, uh, clearly equal to God. So all of this is intended to show that the idea <laughs> of Tawheed, as taught by our Muslim friends, that Allah is one in essence, and uh, one person is completely untrue. Right. And as always, you know, uh, we can't do this uh, fabulous shows without the presence of our uh, basically, dear brother here, Sam Shimon. So, Sam, welcome back, my brother. Yeah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, and thank the Lord for using me. Amen. And thank you for having me. May the Spirit fill us for the glory of Jesus Christ, so you'll be exalted in the Amen. eyes and hearts of Muslims. Now, in the previous session, we mentioned that the Quran not only talks about Jesus being absolutely pure and perfect and sinless, it says the same thing about his mother. And the Islamic tradition confirms that Jesus and his blessed mother are absolutely pure, perfect, which shows that they're not mere creatures. Because you remember in 1661 of the Quran, and 3545 of the Quran, it says that if Allah were to take into account <clears throat> people for their wrongdoings, he would not leave a single creature alive. But in his patience, he tolerates them until the appointed day, the day of judgment. So no creature is sinless in the sight of Allah. And yet the Quran and Islamic tradition says Jesus and Mary are sinless. What do you end up with? Jesus and Mary are no mere creatures. They must be fully divine beings that became flesh. So either that means there are four persons in the Islamic Godhead or there's more than one God. But let's right. continue to elaborate the things that the Quran says about Jesus in which Muhammad is aping, taking over what he hears from Christians, what they say about Jesus, and he makes it part of his own theology, hoping that in doing that, he'll entice them to consider his prophetic claims, not realizing that by adopting those titles or descriptions or characteristics, he was pretty much exposing himself as a false prophet. Take, for instance, the Quran calling Jesus El Messiah 11 times. 11 times in the Quran, Jesus is called El Messiah. We'll look at just one of those 11 instances in chapter 3, verse 45 of the Quran. Which people can see right now uh, in front <clears throat> so, of them. So notice what it's the angel supposedly speaking to Mary, and they say, and remember when the angel said, O Mary, Lo Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Now, we've already looked at this in previous sessions. And here is the title. The Messiah. Right. But remember, we highlighted the fact that the word for word in Arabic is kalimat. Kalimat minhu. Kalimat yeah. is feminine. That's but right. notice that the word is a masculine subject. It's a, it's a person. It's a male person because it says ismuhu. Whose name, his name is right. the Messiah, right. Jesus, son of Mary. And I just want to emphasize Please. one thing, brother, here, that he's called glad tiding, good news. And just a side note, Muhammad's birth wasn't announced in the Quran, Nowhere. nor that Nothing. it was mentioned as good news. Nor, but we know then that's going to segue into the Old Testament prophesying the birth of the Messiah. Now, although the Quran calls Jesus El Messiah 11 times, it doesn't tell us what the title means. Nowhere in the Quran will you find a definition of the title Messiah. Therefore, if you're in doubt, as the Quran tells you, chapter 10, verse 94 of the Quran, Surah al Yunus 94, it says, if you are in doubt concerning That's right. the revelations we've sent down to you, ask the people who've been reading the book before you. That's so right. if chapter you have, 10, verse 94. Yeah, if you have doubt about something in the Quran pertaining to previous history, previous dispensations, previous scriptures, like in chapter 17, verse 101, and 1643, it says, in the case of Is Israelite history, ask the Israelites. In the case of, you know, the Jews and Christians, in 1643, it says, ask the Ahl al-Dhikr, the people who have been reading the Dhikr before Muhammad. So, here the Quran says, Jesus the Messiah, doesn't tell us what it means. So now, they need to ask us. Why is Jesus called the Messiah? What's the significance of Jesus being the Messiah? Well, when we go to the scriptures, God's true word, the Holy Bible, we see that the prophets, centuries before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, announced the coming of the Messiah, and this messianic figure is not a mere man. He is a human being, a physical descendant of David, because the promise of Messiah was given to David and his line, 
But he's more than that. He's God in the flesh. And let's prove it. I'm going to be reading passages from the scriptures. I'm going to go to Isaiah 9, okay. 6 to 7, which and, is clearly... Uh, I'm going to write it down for people. <coughs> Isaiah 9. 6 to 7. Clearly a messianic prophecy, right? For unto us a child is born. Notice the language. Unto us a son is given. And by the way, in Isaiah 9, 1 or 2, it says this is going to take place around Galilee of the nations, Galilee of the Gentiles, by the way, of the sea, by the Jordan, the Sea of Jordan. A great light has dawned to those who are in darkness. Where? Galilee of the Gentiles. Don't forget, Galilee. Amen. And if we can show the slide, by the way, uh, that I had last, uh, I'm writing down these references right yes, there. Yes, Isaiah people. 9, 6 to 7, All right. with 1 and 2. Now, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. This child born, his name is Wonderful Counselor, mighty, the Mighty God, mighty God El exactly. Gibor. That's right. The everlasting Father, the Father of eternity, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So his government never ends. Upon the throne of David, that's why it's messianic. It's a promise that this child will sit on David's throne. And upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. So this child will reign on David's throne forever as the mighty God. Now, what's interesting about this, El Gibor is used of Jehovah in the next chapter of Isaiah. That's right, Isaiah chapter basically Chapter 10, 10. verses 20 to 21 of Isaiah. That's it right. says that a remnant shall return, a remnant shall return unto the mighty God, El Gibor. So Jehovah is the mighty God. This child born is the mighty God, a child born to rule on David's throne forever. So he's an eternal king. You know why that's astonishing? The Hebrew words, a child is born, is yelid yulad. That's right. Yelid yulad. In Arabic, lam yelid wa lam yulad. You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> chapter 112 of the Quran, Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse 3, it says, Allah neither begets nor is begotten, lam yelid wa lam yulad, meaning mm -hmm. Allah would never be born as a baby, right? That's right. Here's a prophet writing over 700 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, about 20, 20 years before Muhammad, and he says, the mighty God of heaven himself will be born as a child. So here you have a prophet saying that chapter 112, verse 3 of the Quran is wrong because Allah will be born, meaning the true God, the Allah of the Bible, not the Allah of the Quran, will be born as a child, and that child is the Messiah who sits on the throne of David. So if that's the case, Jesus is the Messiah. And the prophet says the Messiah is the mighty God born as a child to reign on David's throne forever. Muslims, you have a problem. In affirming the Messiahship of Jesus, <clears throat> Muhammad ended up bearing witness to his deity even though that's not what he intended to do. Amen. You're seeing the and, dilemma here? And you know, brother, I want to really stop here and pick it up in the next session because this is a deep topic, in fact, and even Jesus himself conferred the deity uh, uh, of the Messiah <coughs> in yes. one of his arguments with the Pharisees. So hopefully everybody has been uh, tracking with us. Take notes. Uh, go and in inspect and investigate. As Jesus himself told us to search the books. And even the Bereans were listening to Paul preaching, but they're going back to the scripture to make sure that everything that he says is true. Now, that's true of the Bible. When it comes to the Quran, just go and see for yourself what these passages are, are saying and use a logical argument with our Muslim friends to help them go back to the Word of God because the Word of God will save, but the Quran does not. Till we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ.